Ready, judges? Everybody? Okay. So, good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Arista County Spelling Bee. My name is Scott Bazin, and I'm the Dean of Community Education at UMFK. I'll be your Master of Ceremonies tonight, and it is my pleasure to welcome all of you to our campus for this exciting event. The coordinators of tonight's Bee are, are Deanna Potter, MSAD number 27 District Librarian and Ralph Karen, Dean of Students at Valley Rivers Middle School Community High School in Fort Cap. It is also my pleasure to introduce our judges tonight, who are all members of the UMFK community. So when I call your name, do the pageant wave for me. Uh, Linda Dupre is UMFK's Development Officer. Jennifer Shapiro is UMFK's Community Education Specialist. And Shannon Lugden is the Administrative Assistant in Community Education. Thank you all for the thank you all judges for being part of tonight's event. In addition to the judges tonight, I'll also be serving in the role of a procedural overseer of sorts to ensure smooth operations of the spelling bee. Our bee master tonight, the position of honor, will be Dr. Erin Susi, UMFK's Director of Nursing. I want to thank her for agreeing to be part of this year's spelling bee as well. And after we're all done, she's giving us all a lesson on how to do injections. <laughs> uh, um, the winner and first runner-up of tonight's bee will move on to the State of Maine Spelling Bee, which will be held on Saturday, March 24, at 2, uh, I think it's 2 p.m. at Hannaford Hall at the University of Southern Maine. The winners of the State Bee will move on to the National Bee. It is now my pleasure to introduce the spellers. Spellers, please stand as your name is called and be seated once I've introduced you. I'm going to ask everybody to please hold your round of applause until I'm done introducing all the spellers. From Ashland District School, we have Kaylee Bolstridge and Rochelle Chassis. From Dr. Lebeck Elementary School and Wisdom Middle School, we have Madison Picard and Helena Hayes. From Easton Elementary Junior Senior High School, we have Logan Bernier and Alex Hale. From Forkin Elementary School, Valley Rivers Middle School, we have Madeline Nickerson and Carter Desjardins. From Greater Holton Christian Academy, we have Eamon Simos and Brock Thompson. From Holton Junior High School, we have Lana J and Kenzie Hodgkins. From Madawaska Middle High School, we have Taylor Pelletier and Haley Blanchett. From Woodland Consolidated Elementary School, we have Anastasia Hearn and Vivianine, I think I got that right, Presha. Did I get that right, Vivianine? I got it right, way to go. Big round of applause for all of our staff. I want to take this opportunity to congratulate all of our scholars for all of their hard work and dedication to get to this level of competition. You are all winners and should all be proud. I will now go over the rules for tonight's competition. First, the audience rules. Yes, we all have rules to follow in this competition. Audience members are to turn off cell phones, pagers, and other electronic devices, or set them to vibrate mode. <clears throat> Ringing cell phones and such can be very distracting to the spellers. We want you all to be aware that we will be videotaping tonight's event, and it's being videotaped from the side of the stage over here. If you are here with young children who start to make a fuss or make noise during the competition, we ask that you please leave the auditorium for a period of time 
to avoid distracting spellers. Please remain as quiet as possible. Please do not attempt to help a speller at any time or in any way because that may lead to the disqualification of the speller. If you take photographs, please do so only when no speller is at the microphone to avoid distractions. Please hold your applause until the end of each round. Do not applaud after each speller has spelled a word. A speller's parent, legal guardian, or teacher has the right to appeal the ruling of the judges or to point out an error or issue that has been miss missed by the judges. All appeals must be made to me prior to the end of the round in which the error occurred. Once the round is completed, no appeals will be taken. The judges have final say on the appeal and no speller will be reinstated into the competition unless it is determined that an error in procedure or an oversight was made. A speller will only be reinstated into the competition if the error or oversight is of no fault of their own. No appeals of any kind will be accepted or discussed once the round and or the competition is complete. There will be no intermission during this event. Unless it is absolutely necessary, please remain in the auditorium throughout the program. The noise of the door opening and closing can be distracting. I want to thank you for your cooperation. I'm glad you don't spell that, but I can't say anything. <laughs> now the rules of the competition. Spellers and judges, please pay really close attention. The spelling bee will take place in rounds. <clears throat> we will begin with a practice round to get everyone comfortable with the process. This practice round will not count. During that round, there will be times when I give you pointers, as I said out there, and direction to help you improve as you move forward. So that's why we do the practice round. You have picked numbers to determine the order of spelling. When it's your turn to spell, please proceed to the microphone at the center of the stage and face the B master and judges. When you're ready to spell the word, you are given, and this is very important, say the word, spell it, and then say the word again to indicate you are finished. I repeat, say the word, spell it, and then say the word again. Please speak clearly, do not mumble, and please face the judges. If we cannot hear you, we may not hear if you spell the word correctly. If you mispronounce the word prior to spelling it, I will tell you of the mispronunciation and will ask you to repeat it correctly. The B master can also do that if she hears that. You will not be allowed to spell the word until you pronounce it correctly. <coughs> you will, but you will not receive an alternative word. You can ask the B master questions about the word. You can, you can, but are not required to ask her to tell the origin of the word, the part of speech, the definition, and if there's an alternative pronunciation. You can also ask her to use the word in a sentence. You can ask each of, each of these questions only once per word. The B master will inform you ahead of time if the word is a homonym or a near homonym or has similar words, etc. Um, but it's spelled differently. If the word is a homonym or such, the B master will provide the part of speech and the definition well, without being asked. The B master will also inform you if a word is often confused with another word or if it has more than one acceptable spelling. Again, in those situations, she will provide the part of speech and the definition without being asked. And if there's more than one acceptable spelling, we'll accept either one of the acceptable spellings. If you begin to spell a word, this is very important to so pay very close attention. If you begin to spell a word and then stop, you can start over. But if you do, you must repeat the word and then repeat the same letters in the same order that you did prior to stopping. So for example, if I'm spelling the word university, I say university and then spell U-N-I-V. If I stop there, I can restart by saying university and the same sequence of letters U-N-I-V and then finish the word. If I start over again with different letters or with a different sequence, it'll be considered an incorrect spelling. Do you guys all understand what I just said? The judges have final say if a word is spelled correctly or incorrectly. They have a list of words in front of them and will be paying close attention. While I'm not an official judge, I will at times interrupt the spelling bee to point out procedural issues or errors made in the process. 
Again, please speak clearly. Um, please speak as clearly as possible. No gum chewing or candy while you're up there. When you spell a word correctly, a judge will ring a bell. Please return to your seat on stage once the bell rings. If you spell a word incorrectly, the judges will not ring the bell and the bee master will tell you it is incorrect. You should return to your seat until the end of the round. So always go back to your seat on the stage. At the end of each round, spellers who have misspelled a word will then proceed carefully down the stage stairs we go, go where you came in, okay? Um, to one of the seats with the little white bags. A gift bag from UMFK has been provided for all the spellers. We got some cool stuff in there. Yeah. Earbuds? Do we have earbuds in there? Yeah. Cool. UMFK earbuds. Nice stuff. Um, okay. <clears throat> if a word is capitalized, has an apostrophe, or is hyphenated, you, or anything like that, you do not need to include that information when you spell the word. But if you do include it, you must do so correctly or it will be cons considered a misspelled word. When only two contestants remain at the end of the round, the first person to misspell a word in a round will be disqualified. Then the remaining person must spell their word in their own round correctly, must spell their word in that round correctly, and then spell the word in their final round before being called the winner. We'll walk you through that process. If the final speller misspells his or her final word, then the first runners or runners up will come back into the competition and another round begins. At the end of the competition, I ask that all contestants please remain seated for the awarding of certificates, plaques, and for photos. Does anyone have any question before we begin? Okay, we're all set. Dr. Susie, you can now begin the practice round of the spelling. Good luck to everybody. Can the first dollar come up, please? Your word is cordial. Can you use it in a sentence? Leland gave his guests a cordial greeting and offered them tea. Cordial, C-O-R-J-E-L. Sorry. It doesn't okay. count. It doesn't count. It's just practice. Next speller, please. Your word is peroxide. Peroxide. P E R O X I D E. Peroxide. Speak a little clearer next time, please. Your word is amputation. Amputation. A M P U T A T I O N. Your word is miracle. Miracle. M I R A C L E. Your word is contagious. Contagious. C O N T A G I O U S. Contagious. Your word is alacrity. Could you please use that in a sentence? Dr. Cameron's students always enter his class with alacrity and depart with reluctance. Alacrity. A L L A C U R A T Y. I'm sorry. Your word is reservoir. Reservoir. R E S I V I O R. Sorry. Reservoir. Sorry. Don't forget to say the word when you're done spelling it, so we know you're you're completed. Your word is orchids. 
Orchids. O R C H I D S. Orchids. Your word is quantum. Quantum. Wait, uh, Aaron, you need to read the near hominem piece ahead of that. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Start See, I need to learn too. <laughs> this word has a near hominem. It's a noun, and the definition is one of the very small increments or parcels into which many forms of energy are subdivided. Your word is quantum. Quantum. Q U A N T U M. Quantum. Your word has a homonym. It's a noun. And it means a powder that consists of zinc oxide and ferric oxide that is used in lotions and skin treatments. Your word is calamine. Calamine. C-A-L-A-M-I-N-E. Calamine. Your word has a homonym. It's a plural noun. And it means plant-eating mammals from tropical American and southeastern Asia that have a heavy, sparsely hairy body and short, flexible trunk. Your word is tapers. Tapers. T-A-P-I-R-S. Tapers. Your word has a near homonym. It's an adverb, and it means in a light or carefree manner. Your word is jauntily. Can I have it in a sentence, please? Mm -hmm. Steve's hat was perched jauntily on the side of his head. Jauntily. Could you, could you please say that again, please? Jauntily. Yeah. J-A-U-N-T-I-L-Y. Jauntily. Your word is despondency. Despondency. D E S P O N D E N C Y. Despondency. Your word is azalea. Azalea. A Z A L A. Azalea. Sorry. Your word is flabbergasted. Flabbergasted. F L A B B E R G A S T E D. Flabbergasted. Your word is linoleum. Can you use the word in a sentence, please? The pattern in Sheena's kitchen linoleum resembles inlaid pebbles. Linoleum. Could you repeat that, please? Linoleum. Thank you. L A N O L I U M. Linoleum. Sorry. Dr. Susie? Yes. After reading it in a sentence, say that again. Excuse sure. Me. Yeah. Good. Okay. That's the end of the practice round. Now we're going to start for real. Um, so, you, anybody have any questions at this point? You've all been through one version. Audience, you're all set? Okay. Here we go. Now we're working for real. And let's be on number one, please. Your word is sophomore. Can you use it in a sentence? 
While a sophomore in high school, Ted worked part-time at a fast food eatery. Sophomore. Sophomore. S-O-P-H-O-M-O-R-E. Sophomore. This word could be confused with a similar word. It's a noun, and it means calmness, especially in frame of mind or in bearing of appearance, self-possession. Your word is composure. Composure. C-O-M-P-O-S-U-R-E. Your word is claustrophobic. Claustrophobic. C L O U S T R O P H. Ah, oh, never mind. I got that wrong. Sorry. I'm sorry. Your word is impeccable. Impeccable. I-M-P-E-C-C-A-B-L-E. -E. Impeccable. I'm hearing uh, whispering of the spelling in the audience that needs to cease immediately. Your word is stevedores. Can you use it in a sentence, please? Mm -hmm. The captain instructed his crew that they would be acting the parts of the stevedores when they arrived at port. Your word is stevedores. Stevedores. S T E P H A D O R S. Sorry. Your word is Repugnance. Repugnance. R E P U G N A N C E. Repugnance. <laughs> Your word is vociferous. Can you use it in a sentence? The students' vociferous complaints led to the reinstatement of Taco Tuesday. Your word is vociferous. Vociferous. B-O-S-I-B-E-R-A-C-E. -E. Vociferous. I'm sorry. <coughs> Your word is Strenuous. Strenuous. S T R N O U S. Strenuous. Sorry. Your word is Sherpa. Sherpa. Capital S H E R E A. Sherpa. Your word could be confused with a similar word. It's a plural noun, and it means building containing furnaces for reducing a dead body to ashes by the action of fire. Your word is crematoria. Crematoria. C R E M E T E R R I A. Sorry. This word could be confused with a similar word. It's a noun, and it means an announcement or notification. Your word is intimation. Intimation. 
I N T I M A T I O N intimation. Your word is voluminous. Can you use it in a sentence, please? Even though the skirt of her gown was very voluminous, the young starlet had no trouble moving down the red carpet. Your word is voluminous. Voluminous. V. Can you repeat the word, please? Your word is voluminous. What was the first letter she said? B. 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 Voluminous. V A L O N O N O U S. Sorry. This word could be confused with a similar word. It's a noun, and it means a steel frame with spikes that is attached to a boot with straps for use in climbing on ice and snow. Your word is crampon. Crampon. C-R-A-M-P-O-N. Crampon. Your word is Proviso. Can you repeat the word? Proviso. Proviso. P R O V I S O. Proviso. Your word is incarcerated. Incarcerated. I N C A R C E R A T E D. Incarcerated. Your word is monomania. Monomania. M O N O. M-A-N-I-A, Monomania. And that's the end of round one, everybody. Round of applause for our winners. And anybody who's been spelled, please get, get, move off the stage to one of these seats with the white bags, please. Okay. And we're ready for round two. First spell, please. Let's, let's wait till everybody get, takes a seat first. Front guys, there's chairs for you. There's some other, other rows there. You're there's, there's, hold on, there's gift bags for everybody. We'll get, make sure you get one before you leave, okay? So nobody leaves that one. Just don't open them yet. Just don't okay? open them yet. Surprises. Yeah. All right. Your word is extenuation. Can you use it in a sentence? Silas knew that the act of breaking his mother's favorite vase was incapable even of extenuation, but still he tried to explain himself to her. Your word is extenuation. Extenuation. E X P U A Extenuation E X T U A T I O N This word could be confused with a similar word. It's a noun, and it means a spout that is often in the shape of a grotesque animal 
and projects from a roof gutter to throw white rainwater clear of a building. Your word is gargoyle. Gargoyle. G A R G O I L. Gargoyle. Sorry. Your word is atrocity. Atrocity. A T R O C I T Y. Atrocity. This word has a near homonym, it's a noun. <clears throat> And it means a Muscogan people. Your word is Seminole. Seminole. S-E-M-I-N-O-L-E. -E. Seminole. Your word is Memorandum. Can you repeat the word? Memorandum. Memorandum. M E M E R A N D U M. Sorry. <coughs> Your word is pastrami. Pastrami. P A S T R A M I. Pastrami. Your word is hallucinations. Hallucinations. H A L L. U C I N A T I O N S. Hallucinations. Your word is conspicuous. Can you use it in a sentence? The heiress was skewered in the press for her conspicuous spending habits during the time of national crisis. Your word is conspicuous. Conspicuous. C O N S P I C O U S. Conspicuous. Sorry. <clears throat> Your word is financiers. Financiers. F I N. A N C I E R S financiers. Your word is tempestuous. Can you use the word in a sentence, please? Mm -hmm. When the novice sailors began to doubt that they would be able to handle the tempestuous conditions, they radioed the Coast Guard for help. Um, you, you misspelled that. Wrong. Your word is tempestuous. 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 T E M P E S T. U O U S tempestuous. Oh, we're done. That's the second round. Right? <laughs> Can everybody who did not stop right too? Oh, now we've already seen it. I get so intense to look at my notes that when the round's done, I'm still doing this thing. Right?
three. Your word is excruciating. Excruciating. E X C R U T I A T I N G excruciating. Your word is treacherous. Treacherous. T R E A C H E O U S. Treacherous. I'm sorry. This word could be confused with a similar word. It's a noun, and it's the resurgical removal of a narrow tube found in the abdomen. Your word is appendectomy. Appendectomy. A P P E N D E C T O M Y. Don't forget to say the word after you finish spelling it. This word has a homonym, it's a noun, and it means a monster in Greek mythology having typically a lion's body, wings, and the head and bust of a woman. Your word is sphinx. Sphinx. S-P-H-I-N-X, sphinx. <coughs> Your word is uncoquettish. Uncoquettish. U N C O Q Q U T I S H. Uncoquettish. Your word is Disquisition. You repeat the word, please. Disquisition. Disquisition. D I S Q U I S I T I O N. Disquisition. <laughs> that's the first time that's ever happened. They can spell it again, say it. That's pretty amazing. Yeah. Okay, we are now to our fourth round, I believe, and we will begin. Oh, let's wait till everybody sees. I'm sorry, I keep forgetting that. Your word is requisites. Requisites. R E Q U I S I T E S. Requisites. Your word is annexation. Annexation. A N E X X A T I O N. Annexation. Sorry. Your word is lassitude. You repeat the word, please. Lassitude. Is there any alternate pronunciation? Lassitude would be the next. Lassitude. L A S S I T U D. Lassitude. Sorry. 
Okay, so um, those of you who misspelled, stay there. Okay, we have one person who spelled correct who's left behind. If you come up and spell this next word correctly in your own round, you become the champion. So could the next person please come up? That's correct, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, just, I never get that last thing right. Okay. Your word is bilious. Bilious. B I L I O U S. Bilious. Congratulations. Now we, because there were two, you are the winner, but we need to we need to go back and forth to figure out who the runner up is because we need a runner up to represent us in the state as well as a possibility. So we're going to have to continue. You you hold steady and smile and take pictures, and <laughs> and, and the next two are going to continue. So you be next, and we're going to see who the next for the runner up is. Okay. Your word is grotesque. Grotesque. G R O T E S Q U E grotesque. Your word is sanguine. You repeat the word, please. Sanguine. What's the definition of the word? Marked by eager hopefulness. Ardently or confidently optimistic. Your word is sanguine. Sanguine. S A N G U I N. Sanguine. Sorry. Sorry. So she needs to add one more in a row. Okay, so if you do one more word correctly, you will be the runner up. So please come forward. This is your own round. Okay. This word has a homonym. It's a noun. And it means any of a genus of cone-bearing evergreen trees and shrubs with usually scale-like overlapping leaves and reddish to brown bark that often peels or flakes off in strips or scales. Your word is cypress. Cypress. C Y P R U S Cypress. Sorry. Sorry. Okay, so we will start another round to see who the first runner up is. So you get to come back up. You get to come back up. Yeah, because you're first in the round. Yep. This word could be confused with a similar word. It's an adjective, and it means full of juice or juicy. Your word is succulent. Succulent. S U C C U L E N T, succulent. This word could be confused with a similar word. It's a plural noun, and it means a rounded vault raised on a circular or other base and forming a roof or ceiling. And your word is cupulas. Your word, please. Your word is cupulas. Cupulas. C U E U L A S. Cupulas. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Another round with you alone, start to work this out. And here we go. Your word is avocations. Can you repeat the word, please? Avocations. Avocations. A V O C A T I O N S. Avocations. Congratulations. <laughs> Congratulations, everybody. Congratulations to our winner and our runner-up. Um, we now have our 
coordinator who will be giving out um, some um, certificates. And we also have goodie bags. Nobody leaves without a goodie bag. Well, the students do, all right? Uh -huh. um, and um, we'll be taking a bunch of photos. I want to thank everybody for coming tonight, but let's do the award ceremony first. You want to shout? Okay. I'm known for a loud voice. Okay. I'll first hand out the certificates to the participants. The first is Rochelle Chassie. Brock Thompson. Oops. Amon Simones. <laughs> Vivian Preshaw. Anastasia Hearn. Bailey Blanchett. You are all welcome to stay after for photographs with moms and dads, and I believe there will be an official photo, photo being taken. Uh, thank you all for coming tonight, and if any of the students did not get a goodie bag, I'm here. You guys need goodie bags too. Okay, thank you all for coming tonight. Drive safe. <laughs>